Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus Channel. You must have heard of Transformer Toys, the sorts that kids can twist, turn, and contort from a robot to a vehicle. But what about Transformer Aircraft? Sounds like something out of a futuristic movie. However, there is such a thing in real life. In this feature, you'll learn about the crazy engineering behind the F-35B Transformer aircraft. Its mechanics allow this jet to be one of the most versatile in the U.S. military. Like a plane, it can travel long distances and at high altitudes. But like a helicopter, it's capable of vertical landings. It's a true transformer aircraft. The F-35B is the short takeoff and vertical landing variant of the F-35 Lightning II. A fifth generation stealth fighter aircraft developed by Lockheed Martin. The U.S. military began developing this jet in 1995, and they did so for several reasons. One was flexibility. A short takeoff and vertical landing aircraft can operate from a wider range of airfields including smaller, austere bases, and amphibious ships. This gives it greater operational flexibility. Secondly, with its ability to take off and land vertically, this aircraft does not need a long runway. Reducing the time and resources required to set up a forward operating base in a conflict zone. Operating this kind of plane requires fewer ground support personnel and equipment, making it easier and less expensive to deploy and maintain in the field. How do the mechanics work exactly? It's an engineering feat. The F-35B is equipped with a lift fan system. The lift fan is a large fan located in the center of the aircraft and generates a powerful vertical airflow. This airflow combined with the exhaust from the aircraft's engine provides the lift needed for the aircraft to take off vertically or hover in the air. Another key component of the F-35B's short takeoff and vertical landing capability is its roll posts, which are small, wing-mounted exhaust ports that redirect the engine exhaust downward during vertical flight. This provides roll authority during the hover phase, allowing it to maintain control during takeoff and landing. The F-35B also features a unique fan-driven lift system that can be adjusted for different flight modes. In conventional flight mode, the lift system is configured for maximum aerodynamic efficiency, allowing the aircraft to fly fast and far.
In the short takeoff and vertical landing mode, the lift system is adjusted to provide maximum lift and stability, making it possible to take off and land vertically. The combination of the lift fan, roll posts, and fan-driven lift system make the F-35B one of the most advanced transformer aircraft in the world. Of course, the technology has taken years to master. Many of the F-35B's practice runs took place here at the Climatic Chamber, located at the McKinley Climatic Lab at Elgin Air Force Base in Florida. Test pilots had the opportunity to practice with groundbreaking technology in a controlled environment. By controlling the exact temperatures the F-35 is subjected to, test pilots can see how the jet performs in the harshest of hot temperatures to cold Arctic environments. In the chamber here, we have the ability to completely control the environment that we're going to sub that we subjected the F-35 to. Kinley Lab, they have seen virtually every aircraft in the Western world for decades, for the last number of 40 years or so. As the military cannot control when and where war may break out, these jets must be able to perform in all climates. It wasn't until March 2013 that a Marine squadron conducted its first test flight of the F-35B Lightning II. At the Marine Corps Air Station in Yuma, Arizona, Major Robert Rusnock piloted the plane, successfully conducting a short takeoff and landing the plane vertically. The event marked a historical milestone for Marine aviation. Of course, the U.S. is not the only country developing futuristic aircraft. In the late 1950s, Canadian manufacturer Avro Canada created the Avro car. The saucer-shaped Avro car was designed as a proof of concept for a flying saucer-style aircraft that could achieve vertical takeoff and landing capability. The Avro car was powered by a single turbojet engine that generated a downward facing exhaust plume. This provided the lift for takeoff and landing. The saucer shaped airframe provided stability during flight. The first prototype of the Avro car was unveiled in 1959 and underwent several years of testing. Despite its innovative design, the Avro car suffered from several design flaws, including poor stability and limited altitude capabilities. The project was ultimately canceled in 1961, after a series of test flights revealed that the aircraft was unable to meet its performance goals. Despite its limited success, the Avro car was an important step in the development of vertical takeoff and landing, or VTOL aircraft, and its design served as a precursor to later jets. The Avro car is now remembered as an interesting, if not quirky, example of experimental aircraft design. Also now retired, but similarly futuristic, is the VertiJet. The VertiJet was a concept aircraft that was first proposed in the 1950s by the U.S. Navy. It was offered as a potential solution to the challenges of vertical takeoff and landing aircraft. The VertiJet concept called for a conventional aircraft that could take off vertically and then tilt its engines forward to achieve horizontal flight.
By 1981, an updated version of a vertical and short takeoff and landing aircraft was taking the world by storm. In that year, British Aerospace and American company McDonnell Douglas unveiled an AV-8B Harrier jet. The AV-8B was an improvement over the earlier Harriers developed in the 1970s, all of which had VTOL capabilities. The AV-8B was equipped with a more powerful engine, giving it a significant boost in thrust and speed compared to earlier models. This allowed the aircraft to carry a heavier weapons load and perform more demanding missions. The AV-8B had the capability to take off or land vertically because the jet engine provides a stream of fast moving air through nozzles attached to the side of the engine. A system that controls the rotation of the nozzles directs the air or thrust downward. Despite its strengths, the Harrier has faced challenges over the years. It has high operating costs and intense maintenance requirements. This is mainly due to the complexity of its vectored thrust engine design and its advanced avionics systems. The vectored thrust engine requires regular checks on the engine nozzles and the mechanisms that control them. As well as routine inspections of the fuel and hydraulic systems. Before uh, performing the functional, we hooked up a Jenny with the hide lines and the NC-10 for power. And uh, once we did that, we ended up jacking the aircraft in order to perform the functional because you're going to retract the landing gear. So after that, we performed the functional, then as you can tell, we just dropped the aircraft from the jacks. Then we just started servicing the aircraft so with the hydraulic fluid and uh, nitrogen. It's pretty important to keep the aircraft up and ready to go. That way we can assist the pilots with their training. And if there's no aircraft up, then they can't really progress further. In March 2022, the U.S. Marine Corps retired the planes and welcomed the technologically superior F-35 jets instead. However, the Harrier remains an integral part of many military aviation fleets. And its unique capabilities have made it a valuable asset for many countries worldwide. From aircraft that look like flying saucers to the new and most modern F-35 Lightning II, the development of VTOL aircraft for the U.S. military has required significant advances in aerodynamics, propulsion, and control systems. Engineers have overcome an astounding number of technical challenges to design aircraft that can produce enough lift to take off vertically while also being stable and maneuverable in flight. Overall, the development of VTOL aircraft has been a significant engineering accomplishment for the U.S. military. Enabling U.S. forces to carry out a range of missions in a variety of environments. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.